Hi there, it's Maria from Aviation Ground School here to show you how to change and replace the brake linings on this Cessna 172 T41. So I'm out here, it's the Pacific Northwest rainy day, but we've got a high wing, so it's fine. And I've got my cart all set up. I've got manuals, both the Cleveland brakes manual and the airplane specific manual. And I've already brought out all the tools that I'm going to need for this job and set up my workspace over there. So I'm gonna grab my Scotch Bright ratchet, wire brush, and a light. Thanks everybody for your suggestions from the last video. I've got gloves and safety goggles, so we're ready to go. So over here, I've already set up a pad for my knees and cardboard in case something gets dropped, it won't get damaged and it won't get lost. I've got this bin here to keep everything safe. And I'm gonna set up my lit wor uh, workspace. We're choosing to do this in the daytime outside, so we've already got plenty of light, but if you're doing it inside or at night, make sure you've got floodlights or overhead lighting so that you can see everything you're doing. We're gonna come in here, test that it's coming off, there we go. And this system mainly is comprised of a floating caliper right here. When you do your pre-flight check, make sure that floats. We'll get into why that's important in a moment. A brake disc or rotor and two brake linings a pressure plate that is being pushed in and a backing plate that's being pulled in to create a clamping motion on that rotor. Uh, the brake's controlled with hydraulic fluid. So um, from the pedal, from the rudder pedals, these are tow brakes, it goes to the master cylinder where it converts that mechanical into hydraulic pressure. It uses red 5606 hydraulic fluid to go through rigid and flexible lines that travel to our caliper here. So this is a single piston system and uh, there's also dual piston systems and uh, Cleveland and Macaulay have very similar ways of using their brakes with this floating caliper. There's also different options such as a Goodyear caliper or a Goodyear system, which would have a floating rotor, but a fixed caliper. Additionally, there's different ways that these can be attached. So here we've got these locking bolts that have bits of nylon in there. Those are Cleveland specific. There's other options. You could have safety wired bolts or you um, could actually have a different formation of the caliper that would hold it in place. So now we're gonna wiggle this off. These are the anchor pins. They attach the floating caliper to the torque plate back here that then attaches it to uh, the landing gear and uh, the rest of the system. So here's our pressure plate and here was our backing plate that we already took off. In here, we're gonna clean out these anchor pins. The importance of a floating caliper is so that we have that clamping motion. If you're in a wet climate like this and it seizes up, you're only gonna have the pushing of the pressure plate, not the full clamping. So you're gonna be at half or less brake power um, and it's not good for your system. So we're cleaning this out of our wire and we already used some Scotch-Brite. We'll put that in there. So this is a Goodyear brake, which has a fixed caliper but a floating rotor. Uh, this is on a Beach 18. So one consideration I have before showing this to you guys is that I didn't want to take off my gloves. Uh, so although this is going to get oily, I'm going to clean it later. Don't worry. You'll notice that this floats and moves, whereas the caliper is fixed. We've got our vice mounted Rapco tool here that we're going to use to punch out the rivets. So using my pressure plate first, I'm going to attach this die that's used to take out the rivets right there. Put the head side down. That's the same side that the pad's on. Face that down. Bring this in. I wanna make sure it's centered to push that rivet out. There we go. Give it a little wiggle. It's all good. And just start tightening until that rivet falls out. Now I'll show you in a moment our backing plate. I showed it to some mechanics on the field to try and get their opinion on how much longer it had. Some people said 10 landings, some said 25. Um, that might be as much flying as you do in a year, or that might be as much as you do just in one trip. So that's something to monitor. Uh, brakes don't wear out according to how many hours are on the engine, but how many landings you have, and also how much braking you do. So if you live on a 1500 foot paved strip, and you have to use heavy braking every time, you're gonna have to change your brakes more frequently than if you uh, land at a 10,000 foot grass strip. So with that out, we can see our lining and our pressure plate are separated. Here is this backing plate that I showed to the mechanics. You can see how much was left. A rule of thumb, 3 30 seconds of an inch. You can use a 3 30 seconds drill bit to gauge that. This is an approved method to remove those rivets. We're gonna use this vise and we wanna make sure that it's wide enough that the pressure plate butt doesn't 
bend and the rivet is able to still fall through. So that there looks good. We're going to be driving out the rivet on the back side, not the side that has the brake lining or the head of the rivet. Put our drift in the center and remove it. Almost. So we've got the rivet removed. This is why we wanted to make sure we had a smaller drift than the widest diameter of the rivet. We're just going to ease this out and now that's gone. So we're going to be removing the final rivet on this pressure plate. Many mechanics prefer this method along with the die press over drilling them out because this pressure plate is from 1967. Uh, with all the times that these brake pads are removed and replaced, there's bound to be a time when somebody hits a drill against the side and widens that hole. So this is uh, a preferred method. And now this brake lining is removed. With this pressure plate, we could sand it, bead blast it, scuff it up, paint it with a high temperature paint, um, or just make sure it's clean from grease and oil and put it back on. So today we're gonna to be using a pressure plate and backing plate from a Cessna 182, uh, but I've gathered some different linings and assemblies from around the shop to show you. So here we've got a pressure plate and backing plate that have already been assembled. There's new brake linings. And you'll notice that on that pressure plate, some of the rivets have split. We need to determine if we can still use that assembly or if we'd have to take out the rivets and redo them. In order to figure out if those can be used, we reference the Cleveland Wheel and Brakes Maintenance Manual, which says that in order to use uh, some rivets regarding the acceptance criteria, they must not, the splits cannot occur inside the crest. No more than two splits can occur within one 90 degree quadrant and no more than three splits can be in the rivet in general. So over here we see that there's no more than three splits on any of these rivets, no more than two within any of those quadrants, and that they haven't entered the crest. So this is actually fine. But here's a bit of a better example of rivets that haven't split on that backing plate. Now, regarding the uh, brake linings, we've got two general types. We've got the centered metal types and the organic. So the centered are considerably thinner then the organic ones, and they're mounted to a backing here and then held in by pins. On the organic, we've got some various different types. Um, specifically, there's some differences between these three. This is a 105, a 106, and a 109. The 106 clearly is different. It's got three holes as opposed to two. But between the 105 and 109, there's small differences, but not really enough to be easily discernible immediately. You'll notice they have virtually the same thickness and size. The only difference being the exact dimensions of those holes. It's actually a bit hard to even tell holding them together. The way we're gonna be able to notice is by putting them on the backing plate specifically. You'll notice that that doesn't quite line up. The holes are not perfect and you should never force it if you see this. What it means is that you don't actually have the right part. Whereas here, with the correct part, they line up just perfect. Now, we're gonna put rivets into these, brass rivets, to hold them. And among rivets, there's lots of different types. Um, and we wanna make sure we use the right ones. Even among similar ones, there's different lengths. We wanna make sure we're using two of the same length. The rivets help show it, not only hold it in, but also show us when we need to replace our brakes. And um, we never want the lining to wear down to the rivet. However, there's other different ways to know if we need to replace the brakes. Certain types of linings actually have that built in. So in this one, we see that it's actually got a wear indicator on the side. So that shows us that if it gets down to even with that level, we need to replace our brake pads. So we're here at the foot press and I've got my brake assembly. So I'm gonna put a finger over one side so I can get the other onto the die here and wiggle it to get it centered. I'm gonna press down. This does have a centering bit on it. I still just wanna make sure it's exactly proper. That feels good. I'm gonna use smooth pressure to bring it down and just get some nice tension on it. No much more for now. Then come over to the second side and again, get it centered. And this time, not only will I bring it down, but I'll also finish it off. And then come back to the first side to snug it up. And there's our finished backing plate. All right, it's time to install those new brake linings. So I've got our pressure plate and backing plate here along with our fresh linings. Uh, but before I can do that, gotta take out the other die 
and you'll notice that it's got bits from the rivets that we took off. So I'm just gonna use the dikes here and kind of pry those off. So come down at the base and there we go, done. So we're gonna attach our other die down at the bottom and we're gonna start with the pressure plate. It's a little thinner. Put on a new lining there. Yes, those holes match up as you're gonna see in the other video. And take our rivets, drop them in. Now, you might say, oh, just put in one so we don't have to deal with holding this. We wanna make sure that it's all set up and lined up correctly. So we're gonna put in both. And then it means that once that gets in, I've gotta put a finger over it to make sure it doesn't fall out when I flip it over. Here we go, got it centered. Gonna bring it down. And that's good, we wanna make sure it squeezes evenly. Some mechanics put a drop of oil on the rivet before they squeeze it so that it doesn't crack. I prefer not to do that because I don't wanna have oil near my rotor and on the brake pads. Um, so we're just gonna gently squeeze that in. We don't need to do it all the way yet because this is just on the one side. So right about there, there we go. And take it back out. We'll go to our other side. Now it's starting to get a little colder, considered going inside, uh, at least moving out of the rain. But you know, we're doing okay. And uh, this is not a job that has to be done on both sides. Sometimes one side will wear unevenly. It's totally fine to do one side um, separate from the other, as long as you just keep monitoring both sides. You can't assume that if one side's all good, the other one is as well. So with that one tight, I'll come back to the first one just to get it perfectly clamped on. Now we'll just do it on the other side. Uh, it's, this one will cause a little bit more of a challenge just because it's thicker and bigger and this is such a small mount, so I'm gonna have to open that up a bit more. Take my rivets. Um, the lining and the rivets, uh, the part numbers are found just in the manual. Consult your manufacturer for all of those. Same method, flip it over on the die. All right, so now it's time to reassemble our brake pads. We've got both sides here. We're gonna take off the caliper. It's already been cleaned. Starting with the pressure plate, that fits right on here to those anchor rods. Pardon me. And gets in. And now we're gonna grab one of those locking bolts, put the caliper back on. And we're not doing um, tons today. We're just doing that brake lining. We could repack the wheel bearings. We could change the O-ring on the caliper. This is just linings, but it might be part of a bigger operation later. Um, there we are. And notice it got a little darker, so we added another light. Uh, make sure you keep everything lit up. And this kind of just becomes a matter of working it, trying to get it threaded. Um, this is why it's very helpful to have light and small fingers. So that one's in. Now in the 1967 manual, it didn't even tell us what we should torque it to. So looked up the parts and we got 90 inch pounds set up there. So I'm just getting this kind of started with a finger and then gonna transition to the ratchet. There we go. Oops. Make sure that's going the right way. <laughs> um, so thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, I love seeing the comments and everything. It's helpful and you know, as a young mechanic, I can't wait to hear more and learn more. Um, but I did just finish midterms last week, so now I'm back off to school. Um, can't do much flying out there, but I sure do love seeing what y'all have to say about what I do while I'm home. Um, so getting this finger tight with the wrench here, that's there. So after we get these all installed, uh, you can refer to your manufacturer for how to break them in. Sintered versus organic brakes have very different methods of breaking it in, but generally it's gonna be heavy braking at the start, testing that pedal feel, making sure everything's all set. Uh, this is why we use our brakes before we need them. So if you're gonna be testing them, make sure it's in a safe area, not heading towards anything expensive. Uh, so with this type of torque wrench, we're just gonna move it until it vibrates and makes a noise like that, and then test it a little bit, there we go. And then up to the upper one, same thing. All right, there's our brake job. Thank you so much. Have a great day.